Hi, this is Raj. Welcome to the session on SAD Type 6. Following are the topics covered as part of this session. What is SAD Type 6? When to use SAD Type 6 technique? A walkthrough on demo use case. Demo prerequisites. And the hands-on demo part. What is SAD Type 6? SCD Type 6 is a hybrid technique which involves a combined implementation of SCD Type 1 and SCD Type 2 and SCD Type 3. These are the three different SCD types which we have already seen as part of my earlier sessions. In mathematical terms, the summation of 1, 2 and 3 values gives or yields the value 6. This is one other reason why this technique has been named as ACD type 6. And you have to note that all these ACD types are designed to implement on a single dimension table in this hybrid technique. So how it's done? The historical data in this case is supported by means of ACD type 2 which is as usual. And the current dimension details are possible by means of implementing type 1 and type 3. when to use a hybrid technique such as SCD type 6. When there is a need to facilitate historical and current dimension attribute values from a single dimension table, then in such case SCD type 6 will be implemented or used. A walkthrough on demo use case. This is the structure of our target dimension table which is going to be used for this demo. You can notice that among these fields the staff key is a primary key and staff ID is a business key or natural key which is derived from the source and the old store ID and the current staff store ID belongs to are handled by SCD type 1 and SCD type 3 technique. Whereas the other attributes such as staff first name or last name or staff active, effective from effective until and version fields are handled by SCD type 2 technique. So you can see that all these different techniques are applied on the same dimension table attributes. And hence this is an SCD type 6 dimension table. When you when we go through the demo you will understand how this is being done. But uh, just for prior explanation of how this is going to happen in underneath, just want to give a brief overview on how this SCD type 1 and type 3 is implementation is done as part of this hybrid technique. The current staff store ID field will always hold the value of store ID in which the particular staff is currently working on. So this value gets overwritten across all versions of the particular staff dimension record and hence this is a SRA type 1 attribute. So why we call then this as a type 3 attribute as well. So here is the reason for that. The old store ID or the old staff store ID column is used to hold the value of store ID in which the particular staff has worked upon. That is the earlier working location. And it will change as the value gets changed accordingly. Since there are two columns maintained for holding, holding the store ID, one for old store information and another for current store information, hence this attribute comes under SCD type 3 technique as well. prerequisites for this session. If you are not sure about uh, what is SCD type 1, 2 or 3, it is good to watch my playlist on SCD slowly changing dimension to understand what is a slowly changing dimension and what are the techniques such as SCD type 1, 2, 3 which is required to understand and implement this hybrid SCD type 6 technique. 
Also, I have video courses on ACD type 4 and 5 and 7 as well. If you are interested, you can watch them as well. Also, watch my video on CDC change data capture with Pentahook until timestamp technique. As this will be used during the transformation process, which you will see in a short while during the demo session. Then the Pentahook Etl tool, where actually the processing logic is being implemented. Then a Postgres database server and a client tool to interact with the database server. In this case, I am using PG Admin 3, a client tool for interacting with the Postgres database server. Now let us move on to the demo part. This is the transformation used for implementing a series type 6 in our demo. The first two steps are used to incrementally fetch the records from the source staff table. And these are the two steps. So you can notice that in the second step we have used a filter condition with the last updated date greater than the maximum date retrieved from the target dimension table. So this is how the incremental records are fetched from the source table. Then there is a select or rename value step which is used to typecast the active field from boolean to string data type because in source table the active field is typed as boolean whereas in dimension table it is string hence this conversion and this is the corresponding value map step where we where when the input uh, value for active flag or the field is in boolean terms we are converting into corresponding string values and then in the next step we are going to retrieve the latest current staff store ID and old staff store ID if exists in the dimension table for that particular staff record. So with this information we will update or insert a new record in the target dimension table based on this information such as the old store suppose say uh, staff has been relocated from store ID 1000 to 1110 so the old information like 1000 will be used for updating the new record with the old store ID as 1000 and the new store ID is 1010 so the old store ID is picked from this particular select statement current staff store ID and the current staff store ID is picked out from the incremental data fetch happen from the source staff table and that is what being done in the next further steps so for doing that we are first checking whether the store ID coming from the source table is equal to the currently retrieved current staff store ID from the target dimension table because if that is the case then it means there is no change in store information and there is change in some other information or fields such as SRE type 2 attributes such as first name or last name or active flag. So in that case when there is no change in SRE type 3 or type 1 attribute such as store ID we will disregard or we will not make any change in that store ID information whereas we only do changes or new record being inserted as part of a SRE type 2 style. Since our target dimension table is of SRE type 2, hence we have this dimension lookup or update step. For details on how to use this dimension lookup or update step, watch my video on SRE type 2 or go through the Pentaho documentation. But the thing that I want to show you over here is if you see in the fields tab I have configured the current staff store ID to get assigned with the value of store ID from the source table with a punch through technique. 
and this will ensure that all versions of this particular staff dimension record is updated with the same store ID and the old staff store ID is assigned with the current staff store ID information from the dimension table. So it will automatically get assigned to the previous location on which this particular staff has worked upon. You will get to understand what this means when we run the transformation. So now let us go ahead and run the transformation to see what happens. The transformation is running now. Okay, it has got finished. Now let me select the dimension table. Okay. Now we have got some records. There is two records in the target dimension table which are in line with the source table. So let us just walk through the source table. Okay, this is our source table record where you can see staff Mike Stephens who is currently working on store ID and he is an active user. Let us check whether this particular information has been migrated properly to the target dimension table. Okay, here you can see the information has been processed correctly over here as well. The user is active and the current staff store ID information is 3 and the old staff store ID for both the staffs are empty because uh, this is the first load into our target data mart or data warehouse where we don't have any previous history of the staff so the old staff store ID is empty or null. Now to make things interesting or to understand this AC type 6 technique let us do an update on the staff ID 1 who is Mike Stephens and what we are going to update is this particular staff Mike is being relocated to a store ID of 1 and his last name has been changed or updated to Stephen instead of Stephens. So let me go ahead and make that update. Let me run the transformation again. The transformation has run successfully. Let me select the dimension table. Okay, now you can see a new record has been inserted for Mike. And you can see this new record has been inserted because uh, there is a change in the last name. You can see that has been reflected as well. And now you can see that the old staff store ID is populated with the value of 3 which was his previous location and the current staff store ID of both the versions are updated to the current location. So this is what I mean by type 1 overwrite through a punch through technique where we have overwritten of on all the copies of this particular dimension record of Mike to a current location ID and the old staff store ID is done only on the particular version which is the current version record. So now let us make another update on this particular staff in the source table. So now the staff Mike has been relocated to a store ID of 2 and his last name has been changed again to Stephens instead of Stephen. This is just for the example or demo purpose. So the update is done. Let me run the transformation. The transformation has completed. Let me select the target dimension table. Okay, now you can see an another new record has been inserted for Mike Stephens with the last name correctly changed from Stephen to Stephens. And now you can see that current staff store ID is modified to a store ID of 2 in all the copies of this Mike dimension record. Whereas the old staff store ID of this current 
version or current copy of this dimension record has been rightly updated as 1. Because if you remember, to start with, Mike worked on a store ID of 3, which was in the previous version of this dimension record, which you can see here. And for the current record, the old store ID is 1. Because before moving on to store ID of 2, he was worked in store ID of 1. So that's what has been captured over here. Now, let us make an another update on the source table such that there is no update done on this store information. That is, the person Mike has not been moved to a different store, but there is an update in this record in terms of we are inactivating or suspending that user from the source system. So that is what I have done using this active flag to false. So that is done. Now let me run the transformation. Okay. The transformation has completed successfully. Let me select the dimension table. And now you can see there is another new record has been inserted for the same staff mic. But this time, the new record has been inserted just because of the change in active SC type 2 flag. And there is no change in the staff store ID fields, such as old or current staff store ID. You can see the value remains the same as that of previous version, because there is no change involved in this particular attribute. So this is what I have for you on a series type 6 session. Hope you have understood what this technique is and how to implement this technique in practice. Thank you.